Hello and welcome to another Tech Talk episode. My name is Anna and today our colleagues from the US are going to show us how CarMaker enables vertical integration. I'm delighted to welcome from the US, Carl Squire, Managing Director of IPG Automotive USA. Hi Anna, thanks for talking with me today. I'm really excited to talk with you about this topic. Carl, introduce us to today's topic. What is vertical integration and why is it important? The auto industry has made good use of simulation over the past 20 years or so to significantly improve software quality and reduce development time and cost. And while simulation is widely used, it tends to exist in pockets. Uh, everyone simulates, uh, but very few people are doing end-to-end -end virtual vehicle development uh, that focuses on the vehicle as the system integration platform. So vertical integration is a term describing how companies can create highly efficient workflows that leverage simulation across software development boundaries, uh, from function development to validation in the vehicle, uh, in order to succeed in rapidly developing high quality software for ADAS level three, four, and five vehicles. So there's still work to do. Could you walk us through the steps of vertical integration with CarMaker and tell us what the benefits are? The topic can certainly be overwhelming given the scope of the task at hand. Uh, and since IPG is already working to implement uh, this approach with customers, my team and I thought it would be helpful to make a video sharing the concrete steps uh, as to how it actually works. We've chosen an ADOS emergency braking function, and while it's simplified, it's representative of the process. Uh, my colleagues will take you on a walk from model loop to software loop uh, to hardware loop uh, and even vehicle loop. Um, and this approach is scalable and not limited to ADOS functions. Uh, the benefits are numerous, uh, ranging from uh, improved uh, handoffs between software and hardware teams, uh, rapid troubleshooting of bugs when they're discovered, and also a significant reduction in physical testing. Perfect. Now that we've talked the talk, let's walk the walk and hand over to your team for a detailed demonstration. Hi, my name is Kevin, and I'm going to show you a model in the loop scenario to test an autonomous emergency braking feature, otherwise known as AEB. So in this scenario, the test vehicle equipped with the AEB control function will approach a traffic object directly in front, uh, moving at a much slower rate of speed. So we'll need to brake for that object to avoid that collision. The driver model and car maker has been bypassed, so any braking to avoid this collision has to be done by the AEB model itself. So let's take a look. Key inputs for this test scenario are the AEB control function model, which I developed in Simulink, and a representative vehicle model generated using the vehicle data set generator that comes standard in CarMaker. CarMaker is fully capable of co-simulating with Simulink, where models can be compiled as C code to run directly in the CarMaker environment. In this case, I am co-simulating with Simulink and CarMaker. One of the nice features of CarMaker is the ability to rapidly create a series of tests in which various factors of the simulation, such as vehicle and traffic speed, can be changed and the test rapidly rerun. This task is completed using the test manager tool that is native to CarMaker. Here is a quick glance at a series of tests run at 5x real time. CarMaker provides a test report noting the scenarios in which a collision occurred. With CarMaker, once confidence is achieved in the control model in a variety of operating conditions, it is simple to move on to a driver in the loop system to further evaluate performance with a human driver in the mix and also scale up the simulation to evaluate performance against thousands of scenarios using high performance computing. My colleagues will now show you how this is done. Hi, my name is Liam. I will demonstrate the ability to evaluate the AEB model developed by Kevin on a driver in the loop system. Driving simulators come in a wide range of configurations. CarMaker is used in all types of these platforms. For today's demo, we will use an office driving simulator with force feedback steering wheel and pedals. Now that Kevin has a level of confidence in the AEB model, I can evaluate performance using actual steering inputs. I'm using the same vehicle model, radar model, and test scenario used by Kevin. I have opted to run the simulant control model as a compiled plugin for efficiency. Let's take a virtual ride. In this test run, I will perform a side to side sweep, then we'll approach the vehicle straight on. As you can see, the AEB function took over and brought the test vehicle to a stop. 
At this point, a common approach is to scale up simulation to evaluate performance against thousands of scenarios using high performance computing. My colleague Avinash will show you how this is done. Hello everyone, this is Avinash Shekhuri and today I'll be demonstrating the ability to evaluate control functions using high performance compute environments or otherwise known as HPC. When developing control functions, it is required to test these functions with wide range of test scenarios. This testing of the function usually takes multiple hours. In order to reduce the overall time of testing, it is beneficial to run parallel simulations on HPC environments. CarMaker is fully capable of running parallel simulations on a single machine, IT data centers, or cloud platforms like AWS and Azure. For today's demo, I'll be testing out an AB control model with multiple variations using AWS Cloud Platform. I've used Test Manager to create multiple variations of a test run by changing the host vehicle speed and traffic object speed. I'll be running these variations using AWS Compute Nodes. Now let's look at the demo. What you see on my screen is on the left, I have CarMaker Test Manager GUI and on the right, I have AWS Batch Console. I've used Test Manager to create 255 variations of the same test run used by my colleagues in SIL and DIL application. To run these variations on AWS, I changed the execution mode in Test Manager to HPC AWS Batch. And by clicking the Start button, all these variations are sent to AWS Batch for computing. On the AWS console, you can see CarMaker jobs queued with 255 subjobs, each representing a variation. In this demo, I'm using eight virtual CPUs for running eight variations in parallel. On the console, you can see the number of variations which are being completed and which are waiting for execution. As these variations are being completed, the results are also being generated and stored. We see that each of these 255 variations are being executed in batches. Once all these variations are completed, we will use the test manager report generation option to create a detailed report of the variations. Here you see the report generated from Test Manager with detailed information of the variations we executed in AWS Batch. Hi, my name is Mohit Sanvikar. Now that my colleagues have verified the AB function to work with high degree of confidence, we can now test it in a software in the loop framework. Of the many tools available to create virtual ECUs, we have used Synopsys Silver for this demonstration. So here, I have the same AEB model, which was used for model in the loop demonstration opened in MATLAB. I have replaced the input and output blocks with Silver's IO blocks. And then using the SimBuilder function block, we compile an associated DLL and A2L file for the virtual ECU. Then we open the Silver GUI. In the next step, I bring in the AEB.dll file into Silver to export it as an FMU so that it can be run in co-simulation with CarMaker. After loading the DLL, I click on File, Export as FMU and work on selecting the necessary inputs and outputs for the model. Next, I select the FMU's name and press finish to finish the FMU export. We can now see the FMU get generated and let's put this virtual ECU to use. Now we have to connect the inputs and outputs of the virtual ECU FMU to the corresponding inputs and outputs of CarMaker vehicle model. To do this, I click on import on the FMU plugins window and select my newly generated FMU. I select the appropriate model class. Here it is vehicle control. I continue with mapping the 10 inputs and 5 outputs of the FMU. 
I am now working on mapping the data dictionary quantities, also known as user accessible quantities for data exchange between car maker and the virtual ECU. Once the FMU has been set up, I select it in the vehicle control section of the vehicle model. Now it is ready to be run in co simulation with car maker. We use the same test runs used in model in the loop and driver in the loop demonstration, and when I click on start, we can see the virtual ECU in play. Once the AEB function has been tested as software in a virtual ECU network, it is time to validate functionality using the actual domain controller and system hardware. Hi, my name is Mayu Ratan. With the completion of SIL testing, we now have confidence our compiled software is working in the context of a virtual ECU network. Once ECU hardware becomes available, we can now test the control function as embedded code running on the target production hardware. This technique is referred to as hardware in the loop or hill for shot. A critical consideration when we move to physical hardware testing is that all simulation must run reliably in real time. IPG has over 30 years of experience in making real time systems. So, Comic is fully enabled to support both faster than real time software development applications such as Mill and Sil as well as real-time applications such as Hill. For our AB development process, I will now show you the process of evaluating the software using the camera module with an integrated AB ECU in a Hill application, as you can see here. The real advantage of using Comic across all development phases is that when a bug is detected, it is easy to go back to see what changed between Sil and Hill. This improves the handoff efficiency between software teams and the teams tasked with validating the code for release. For this hill test, I will reuse the test scenarios and vehicle model from the earlier MIL, SIL, and HPC tests. IPG driver will be driving the vehicle under test. The only difference from previous development phases is a physical camera is being used in place of a virtual camera and the AB control software is actually embedded and operating on the ECU. Hill systems can be quite complex and CarMaker is capable of supporting all hills, from component hills up to the most advanced system hills. For this example, we have pointed the actual camera at a screen showing the visualization generated by CarMaker. This setup is sufficient for a large portion of camera-based testing. For more advanced capability, IPG also offers video injection capability to inject images directly into the camera processor or imager. Based on the simulation, we can see the system passes the test and brings the vehicle to a stop before hitting the traffic object in the road. Once all requirements have been validated, it is time to take the ECU to an actual prototype vehicle for on-road testing. My colleague Akshay will now take you through our vehicle-in-the-loop process that significantly reduces physical vehicle testing while expanding overall test coverage. Hi, my name is Akshay. In traditional automotive software development, hill testing is the last stage of validation using simulation. Upon completion of hill testing, prototype ECUs and control software are evaluated on prototype vehicles at the test track. Physical testing can be time consuming and expensive. It is now possible to use CarMaker to significantly reduce track time by extending simulations with vehicle in loop. For this will test, the scenario from earlier development phases is reused without modification. As we are now running on an actual vehicle, we are using the actual vehicle camera similar to our hill testing setup. Radar sensors are bypassed with CarMaker providing the required sensing input to the ADAS domain controller. As you can see, the vehicle comes to a stop due to the presence of a traffic object in its path in the simulation. Upon completion of build testing, an ADAS team will have high confidence that their control system works well in a wide variety of driving scenarios. Now, the video suggests that it is relatively easy to move through the steps of vertical integration. But what are the challenges of this approach? While well, IPG has the technology and expertise to enable vertical integration, um, there are definitely challenges and it takes time to achieve a fully integrated process. Uh, three key factors that need to be overcome are mindset, commitment of an organization to make change. Uh, second factor is availability of models and uh, shared simulation assets. And that's an area where IPG can help customers understand 
uh, the level of fidelity needed for specific use cases and also strategies for managing data. Uh, thirdly is optimizing reuse of legacy assets. Uh, budget is always a factor and we are sensitive to that fact. And tell us, why is IPG Automotive the ideal partner to enable vertical integration for customers? I think there are a few key factors. IPG is unique in the marketplace and that we are a leading supplier of both vehicle-based simulation software and real-time hardware systems. Uh, our technology and experience allows us to enable end-to-end -end vertical integration workflows. Secondly, a car maker and truck maker are highly configurable and architected to enable the rapid exchange of models, software, and hardware. We have excellent integration with commonly used tools throughout the industry from uh, model build environments to hardware loop systems, uh, driving simulators, and even powertrain test cells. And finally, of equal importance, uh, we are committed to helping our customers achieve success. At IPG, we measure our success based on our customer success. If we take a look into the future, what are the challenges in this domain? And which processes are you working on right now? It's clear to the industry that more simulation is needed uh, to address the challenges of ADOS levels 3, 4, and 5. It's simply impossible to physically test all the possible uh, driving scenarios. Uh, to achieve the level of scale and efficiency that's required, there are many challenges where we're focusing our efforts. But I would say a few key areas are, first, generating and managing meaningful scenarios. Second, are creating automated workflows to enable continuous integration of testing conditions. And thirdly, I would say developing cost-effective and efficient parallel simulation using high-performance computing. Thank you, Carl, and also thank you to the entire US IPG Automotive team for taking the time and introducing us to vertical integration for simulation in vehicle development. Thanks so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to share the video. You're welcome, Carl. It was great having you here. And if you have questions about vertical integration or CarMaker, feel free to contact us. Thanks for tuning in and see you soon for another Tech Talk episode.